All right, more on the subject of how and why amps want to kill you. This is a 70s Vibrolux reverb. It's in to be recapped fully. And um, it is not nearly as pretty as that 68 Super Reverb. But there is one important distinction besides that. This amp has 123 volts coming in from the wall right now. It is plugged in but powered off, just like the Super Reverb was in the previous video. And now measuring between the chassis and AC ground at the outlet. And there is zero volts AC present. And regardless of the position of the polarity cap, there is still zero volts AC present, which means that if I measure potential current between chassis and ground in this amp, remember the safe uh, two conductor non-grounded chassis super reverb, which is beautiful, had two milliamps of voltage between its chassis and AC ground. This one has zero milliamps. If I go to the microamp setting, with the amp plugged into the wall but not powered on, I have zero microamps. If I turn the amp on, I have 1.8 microamps. And that um, current is so minuscule as to essentially still be zero. If I do it at the milliamp setting, zero. Whereas I had two milliamps uh, with the 68 Super Reverb. So what's the difference between the Super Reverb and this one? This one has a grounded three conductor power cable and the capacitor connected uh, to the ground switch, the polarity switch, the death cap has been removed. So that this amp will never have any potential AC uh, voltage between the chassis and AC ground, earth, in the receptacle, which means it will never have any potential current. So this amp will not electrocute you. So long as this pin is not removed. So many amps come in where people have broken off the AC safety ground prong of their plug. It's called the safety prong for a reason. Without this, you are not protected. The amp is going to be noisy. You're going to be just as subject to elect uh, electrocution. It's a stupid thing to do that too many people do because they don't understand what they're doing. They do it because there's a two conductor receptacle wherever they're plugging in, or they're doing it to, because they want to break a ground loop. If you want to break a ground loop, there are smart ways to do it. You can use isolation boxes with transformers. You can usually just telescope uh, a shield on an audio connection. You never break this ground. You break an audio path ground if you want to break a ground loop. If you have only two conductor wiring at your house, see if you have a, if an electrician can convert at least one outlet in your house to grounded. Uh, I have in the past, when I lived in the house built in 1950, where every outlet in the house was two conductor, I sank a ground rod outside the wall of the room I was using as my studio at the time. And I ran a wire from there into the basement and drilled a very small hole in the floorboards and ran the wire from up from the basement to a receptacle in the box and had one grounded outlet for all my studio stuff. Now, that is going to depend on local code, and I am not telling you to do that. But I am saying that if you have amplifiers like this and you have a non-grounded uh, area uh, house, Find the way to ground at least one receptacle to, to keep yourself safe. Because those old amps love to fail. And when they fail, the path to ground can be through you instead of directly to the wall. Now, if you go to a venue and they only have two con uh, conductor outlets, refuse to play. Just tell all your musician friends, we're not playing at this club. We're not going to play at this venue until they update their wiring so the musicians are safe. Now, on that note, this you could have this amp be grounded and plugged into a three-conductor receptacle at the club, and everything is fine on your end, and you go up to the microphone, and you touch the microphone, or you brush it against it with your lips, and you get shocked, because the PA may be ungrounded, in which case the entire PA will seek ground 
through your lips, your hands, your heart, back to the ground that your amp is connected to. Or the PA may be on a faulty circuit where its ground is not as good as the ground your amp circuit is on and it still will reach through you. So in a future video, I will show how to test uh, the wiring of a receptacle. Even if it's three prong, it does not mean that it's wired correctly. And I will show how to test uh, for a potential voltage between uh, your guitar strings and a microphone. And I will recommend a meter, maybe nothing this large, just something for maybe $20, $30 at uh, any home improvement store, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, or Amazon, that you can stick in your gig bag. So when you show up to a gig, you can make sure that the voltage in the wall is not going to kill you, that the outlet is wired correctly as far as hot and neutral goes, and that the ground is working. And uh, so you can make sure that there is no potential AC or DC voltage, and hence current, between a microphone and you, or um, a, a keyboard and you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and if you show up at a club and there is something unsafe, don't play. Musicians have enough in hard times right now, especially with 2020 and 2021. And people, especially club owners, are always looking to screw us. Don't let them electrocute you, too. You know, th this shit's got to stop.